Hey everyone, welcome to the Threat Gen Red versus Blue live stream. Today, Jerry's going to tackle some social engineering, do some some physical ninja elite type access, and that's all coming up here on Threat Gen Red versus Blue. Let's play. All right, hey everyone. Um, notice something missing at all? There's not two of us here, right? So Jerry's missing. That's all right. So Jerry's running a little bit late. So I'm gonna sit here and do a little song and dance or something while we uh, while we get started. So check in chat here. So hey Justin, hey Carrie, how's everybody doing? Um, today we'll be dealing with social engineering on site. So may do it, it's still it may work. May do a little physical breaking and entering, uh, but it's the challenge today is going to be all on-site physical access. Probably according to the title, Jerry wants to do mostly social engineering, uh, but we're going to see how how that works. It's uh, um, so Carrie's in chat telling jokes. He's got jokes. That's great. Uh, I like I like your sense of humor, Carrie. I like how you've got a pun for everything and jokes for everything. So um, while we wait on Jerry, let's ask the chat. So how many of you focus on social engineering security or training or physical security and training whenever you're, uh, whether it's your organization or for personal? Because I can tell you that back when I used to do red teaming, pretty much most of my, as my day job, physical security was the most neglected part of cybersecurity. You got you have to remember physical security is still part of cybersecurity because physical is an access vector to your cyber, especially whenever someone can gain access from an industrial perspective. Um is as soon as someone can gain access to your control systems or your control room via physical access, we had a 100 percent success rate gaining access to control systems through physical vectors. And so we, uh, InfoSec Live tells us uh, it is how I got into the industry. So using uh, social engineering, you social engineered your way into the industry. Is that right? So um, layer one access is pretty good access. Now, what do you mean by layer one? Do you mean zone one? So if you're talking industrial, like, Zone zero and one usually has the worst physical security. Um, are you talking about the OSI model physical layer? So, <clears throat> yep, that's right. Carl always getting into the building. So, um, oh, that's right. InfoSec layer. That's Simon. I always forget, you know, Simon and I are friends now and he has uh, InfoSec live. He's the host and creator of Info InfoSec live. And every time he gets on, I forget it's Simon. So, uh, you know what? I do not doubt that Simon social engineered his way into the industry. And, and quite frankly, I kind of social engineered my way into the cybersecurity industry uh, as well. And I'll tell that story one day. Maybe that'll be a good uh, a good AMA. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do a threat gen AMA and um, and we'll let like maybe myself, maybe Jerry will join, maybe other cybersecurity professionals, I think that would be an excellent idea to have a cybersecurity AMA with myself and other experts and just talking about how you got into the industry. Uh, because quite frankly, the story of how I got into the industry isn't the same typical story that you hear. So, um, <clears throat> you know what? That's really, really good. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Great idea. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, the, the, the chat's moving too fast. I can't keep up. So Carrie says he was uh, told that uh, sales and marketing are good ways to get in the industry. And that is absolutely true. I mean, if you really get down to it, sales is social engineering. You're trying to convince someone to trust you and buy into your product. And that being said, there's a book and uh, I don't have it listed here, but um, it's called Social engineering, I think hacking the human. It's a book. It's a blue book. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It's a fantastic book. Let's see. Let's find it on Amazon real quick. 
Right. Um. Here it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna post the link. Um, and it's a long link because I just got the uh the search terms and everything. Um. So sorry about that. And not everybody's gonna get this in chat, so I'm gonna post it as a caption. And if sorry, uh, it's too long. Hold on, let me see if I could pop the uh, the search terms off of this. Um, there it is. It because it has the referrer. There we go. All right, I'm gonna post this as a uh, as a comment. As a comment, I'm sorry. As a uh, and and I hope that's not too long for everybody to come. just do a screenshot and manually type that in. I apologize um for that but um that's not it either hold on that's sorry that's an old link don't click on that that doesn't work that's the one sorry that one uh just go to amazon and search for social engineering art of human hacking and do not click do not that other link that i just showed was an old one and it's not available anymore um yeah i know somebody just said sorry about that 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 old one doesn't work but this one right here this is the link this one this one works. Um, that's the the social engineering book that I highly recommend. Um, and so if you have ever wanted to convince anybody of anything, win an argument, sell anything, um, if you ever have a spouse or children or friends or live or breathe, um, you definitely you definitely want to buy that book and read it and live by it. Because to me, that book is full of life lessons. It is a it is a life skills book. You need it. Let me see where Jerry is real quick because yeah, I feel like Garth. You ever seen Wayne's World uh, when Garth's all by himself and he's like, uh, okay, I don't know what to do. But uh, so that's kind of how I feel. Or like Ricky Bobby going, I don't really know what to do with my hands right now. So, all right. Uh, so <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, just talking about OSINT for online dating and Discord. Isn't that just shy of stalking, though? I mean, technically, kind of isn't. You know, if you if you deploy OSINT skills, I mean, technically, isn't can't that be uh, can't that be considered to be like stalking? I mean, I think a lot of social engineering at OSINT stops just short at stalking. Maybe there's a difference between. Um, maybe there's a difference between. I'm doing it for business. So it's OSINT, but if I do it personally, it's stalking. I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, all right. Hey, I think that um, I think that we now have Jerry. We have Jerry. We have Jerry. All right. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound great. Dude, you missed a really good conversation about OSINT versus stalking. It's really cool. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It's really in, in the um, all in the intent, <laughs> right? Yep. All right. Let's figure out how to get this. Uh, oh, we're going to do it uh, this way. No, not that way. Hold on. I'm still learning this. Uh, hold on. I'm... I set this up. I set this up more as, oh, hold on. Let me, let me do it this way. Um, let me do it this way. Uh, I made a, I made I a don't, mistake. Nobody needs to see my face. I can just talk. Why don't we just do it this way? Okay. Hey, wait, can I get myself? No, no, off? that's fine. And I, I can move my, I can move myself a little bit here. You, hold on. Stay where you are and watch this. Let's see what we can Staying do. Staying right here. All right, hold on. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we, can we, uh, yeah, here we go. Yep, up, up, move, up. There we go. Up, up, up. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Atlas. Right. Jerry, I'll... the world of Jerry is on my shoulders. I'll do I... it this way. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's give this a shot. Had a little bit of a production issue. Uh, Nadine had to help me get my, my situation sorted out. And then we've got, lunch over here too so uh, i don't hear any audio uh clint so i'm not sure what's going on with that well you hear my audio right you but you're just not oh hearing yeah game audio. no i can hear your audio good I uh, music. yeah we don't have any like roots going on right that's okay i'll you play pump roots. some music in i'll pump some music in I got just give me a second are you gonna handle it yeah i'll handle music okay gets to be my choice though okay <laughs> all right well let's go Hey, uh, what's up, everybody? Um, it, it looks like we got a good group of people in here. Thanks, uh, Pete McKinnon. Good to see you. Hey, Carrie, Eula Chua. I see you, Simon. Still wanting to know how that new role is going, my man. Michael, good to see you. 
What is AMA? Um, ask me anything it means ask me anything. So I was telling them that'd be a good idea for us to like do a cybersecurity AMA, with, like with me, with you, and just and invite other cybersecurity uh, professionals and just t tell stories about how we got into the industry. Um, yeah, and and totally do an AMA. Do we could totally do that. Oh, you know what? I um, let me let me get rid of the AMA part because that was I just did a stream yesterday. You can still ask questions, obviously, um, please, but just that's what that was about. All right, so let's go in. Are you uh, digging through your milk crate there for a record or something? I'm looking for a, a TRS mail-to-mail -mail, um, adapter. Uh, I'll find one in a minute. Okay. All right, guys. So just so you know, we are... Um, today, we are acting like a red team operator. Social engineering is my goal. Getting on-prem and blowing up ICS machines is my goal. And I got the, uh, just so you guys know, I've got the soundboard up and running. So we are hot to try, including get some, get some Mario coins up in here. All right. Alerts when we get nice. detected. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. So when I take over your, when I take over your firewalls and stuff, you look at me. I'm the captain now. So let's get into it. Okay. Definitely playing as red. Let's go to the oil and gas company. All right, we're red team operator. Um, our goal here is damage the blue team's ICS. That's one win condition, and it's the one that we're going for today. I'm super pumped about it. Let's get into it. It'll be it'll it'll have a little bit more jam. This is why Jerry was running. Oh yeah, no, no, the sound effects. No, no. Honestly, the 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 black uh, felt wall behind me collapsed uh, right before we got on. Okay, so let's do this, uh, Clint. I'm going. My goal is to get on prem. Let me ask you this, just from the game's perspective: Is researching, um, social engineering? Where is it? Is it physical security? Hmm. Um, I wanted to like, I want to break in. So human SE, I think is yeah. what, yeah. what I want to research. Yep. So we're going to work you, yeah. on that to research physical security and research human SE. Yep. Okay. So I'm doing those right now. Let's do a host scan. Oh, wait, I want to do, um, OSINT recon. Cause that's obviously number one. And then we got two resources left and we're going to do research on, <clears throat> Human, 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 human SE, which I, did, did I just do that? Human SE? Or I did, so, did I do human SE? Hold on. I'll go look at my activity log really quick and, or my action queue. Research in human SE. So I need to research physical security. Let's see. Physical security. There it is. Okay, and just so you guys know real quick, up on the, the way, we're playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue. Um, at the top, you can see, these are my hacker resources. This is my action queue of what I'm doing this turn. This is my action log. Things haven't happened yet, but that's okay. And then uh, down here is just a bunch of other stuff like that basically accesses the skill menu. And this is us on the internet. So let's go ahead and end our turn. Oh, nice. All right, you hear the music? It's very subtle. Very subtle. Oh, that's pretty good. That's good right there. All right. All right, let's do it. Here we go. So we're still in our, our, our action log is still executing because it takes time. Just like in real life, guys, it's not like you say, I'm going to do OSINT recon and then you're done, right? It takes time and effort to do the OSINT recon. So we're going to have to wait another turn here. Okay, <clears throat> this is great. Um, we did our OSINT recon. That's great. We did our hu human uh, SE research and our PhysSec research. So now let's begin to move. Um, we're going to change our positioning. Oh, we can't change location yet. Is that because we need to do a host scan from the internet or physical recon? Physical oh. recon. Yep. So this makes sense, guys. We like It's like a skill tree. So I can't get to change location until I do physical recon. So let's do that. 
let us host scan from here and let's continue to bump up our um, research on the physical security because that's really our goal. We want to be an expert physical security pen tester. That music sounds like you live in a city and you just have your window open. Oh, there we go. Now it's actually got music to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the chill. It's um, di.fm chill. I've got like a hundred different EDM and, and down tempo electronic stations here. Oh, okay, cool. I like it. Hadouken. Yeah, Justin Gold. I, I think I, I moved my uh, Hadouken. Where, what do we got here? I can't really test this without hitting it. Look yeah, at no, I'm look the captain. Look at, sure. I'm the captain now. Yeah, these things. I, 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 the, my pads don't have labels on it, so I don't know what I'm doing here. But here we go. We finished our first host scan. And look, we're already starting to see assets. This is great. Okay. We need to be able to change locations too. Can we do that yet? We're still searching, researching physical recon. We only have one person uh, asset available. So we can look at our skill tree really quickly. We can do a port scan on one of the devices we discovered, which is a good idea, continuing to drill into what we know. But we want to create... Hmm. Create a malicious USB takes two turns and two resources, but I definitely want to do that um, as we are getting into the network here. So let's close this and do a port scan on one of these devices. Basically, just to use our resources for maximum ut utilization. I'm so old that I can only think of Captain Over. <laughs> Take the role of red or blue team. That's right. Yep, threatgent.com. Okay, guys. More physical recon completed. Uh, our first port scan is done. Let's see what we found. We got a Windows computer. Not bad. All right. So let us do this. I'm not quite ready to go on on site yet i want to create a malicious usb which is going to take two turns and i want to do a little bit more research on um human se so i don't want to it's really expensive like if you get thrown in jail because you're caught doing something you shouldn't it takes 10 turns at, at three resources a turn it's the most expensive penalty in the game and then let's do another um port scan Cool. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, talking baboon. You got one live. What's up? Good to see you. We got two Windows computers. We can just continue to um, scan, see if we can't find something useful. Now, Clint. Just as a red team operator, since you're a you're, you know red team person, would you continue to port scan to reveal what these are, or would you start drilling down? Like, would you go wide or deep? So it depends. Number one, um, in <clears throat> in real life, port scanning too much can cause noise in the game. You're not going to get penalized for doing port scanning. Although we are going to upgrade that in the future, um, but port scanning right here costs you nothing and there's no risk um but in real life you want to be careful like and unless you're like hired to do a, a pen test where like stealth doesn't matter then boom i mean especially when there's like a hundred thousand nodes uh like when i was i used to pen test for i used to do pen tests for nasa and there's like hundreds of thousands nodes you just blast it but when you're trying to be stealthy and yeah then you 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 pick and choose very carefully uh what you want but here do it just port scan it that way you can see everything that's going on yeah, and uh, Dosso RB, this this game, while this game is appropriate for like any industry, it does really shine in an ICS space. Yeah, it's good for ICS, I, that ITOT collaboration, uh, kind of understanding each side. Cool. All right, guys, we got our malicious USB drive. Our research is... Can we check our look at our skill trees here? Look at our physical security and human SE is loaded up. I want to get in there before the, the blue team starts putting security defenses in place that could prevent us from moving around. So let's go ahead and move to the perimeter. 
That's going to take three people one turn. I, I'm thinking I want to keep researching this. Um, the 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 human SE and electro and phys SE. You know what I mean? It does take two turns, though. This is one of those decision points. It takes me two turns, but it only takes me one turn to move to the um, to the perimeter. So I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm thinking if I'm on the perimeter, I, I'm not going to get arrested. Mm, tough choice here. Tough choice. I guess the question really is, do I do I max out my human SE and physical SE? No, you know what? I'm just going to port scan this because if I get on prem and I get kicked out, I want to have a backup plan, even though my goal for today is to bring down the HMIs. I want to keep I want to keep pinging technically while I physically go on to stick an, uh, a USB in here. Always have a backup plan because everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Mm hmm. Like that guy on JetBlue the other day. Okay. Two of our machines disappear. So that may mean that they got pulled offline. They could have been remote, ac um, you know, um, God, what do they call those people? Remote workers. Um, Justin, what's two mean? Um, oh, yeah, two, two people talking about boom. Thanks. All right, guys, we are on prem. We've got five resources. Let's take a look at what our options are. Oh, yes, Peter, that was a Mike Tyson quote. We're still <laughs> outside the perimeter. I'm going to do a Wi-Fi scan. Um, huh. What can I do here? I think I'm going to do a... Let's do a Wi-Fi scan. Hold on. There is a way to like cover your network attack tracks, which I think the... Oh, they network detections right here. It's not available. Okay. You should have. You created your malicious USB. Yeah, good. Yeah. Can I use that right now? Yeah, yeah. You could drop. I think you could drop up to five of them while you're on site. How do I drop it? Did I already drop it? It's an action. Oh, okay. You already and then if, yeah, I yeah, move, yeah. if I move to the to a location, will it drop it at the perimeter? And then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go into the plant because my goal is to get to the um hmis now i have done both physical and social engineering so i'm going to go with social engineering since that's how i pitched it here yeah that kid on that airplane was trying to get his 15 minutes of fame he chose the wrong person to uh <laughs> to get it i need i haven't seen that yet i need to go check it out yeah i mean tyson was being legit i mean he gave him a couple opportunities to just chill out he even took like a selfie with the kid and the kid was just being a he was intoxicated he oh was so it was actually tyson point. How fortuitous. Yeah. How fortuitous. Like, yeah. Tyson That's turned ludicrous. around and uh That's just ludicrous. Him. ludicrous. Okay, and then hold on, did I already try to change the location? I did. Are we doing the Wi-Fi scan already? No. Let's do the Wi-Fi scan too for maximum utilization of our resources. And let's end the turn. Jerry, do you feel like uh, you feel guilty about sitting here playing games? I think uh our new boss, Greg, is going to uh is going to uh, <laughs> chastise us. I don't know. I think we'll have to just uh, see if we win, right? See how hype we can get chat. Good to see you in chat, Ed. Good to see you in chat. All right, guys. Wi-Fi scan completed. Successful SE entry. We are in the plant. Guys, we are we're, we're dominating. Look at us at the plant level. We got all these other machines that we found. I'm going to drop another USB drive. From these things everywhere. So yeah, uh, Greg is up. Oh, your audio went out. Is that mine? Can everybody, can everybody else hear him? Somebody's audio went out.
Okay. <laughs> you can hear me. Should I turn up the music and just do a little EDM? <laughs> I can do bad lip reading to what he's saying. Like he can be talking, and and I can just do uh, I can overdub his voice. So does everybody like my red shirt? I'm red team today, so I'm wearing the red shirt. Nope. Yep. My lips are moving, but I can't scratch, scratch. Wow, he's like the magic man from. Talladega Nights. Now you see him. Now you don't. It's like, whew. there he goes. Got the headphones on. Now he's looking like a real DJ, like in a recording studio. DJ Jerry. Still can't hear you. DJ Jazzy Jerry. I'm the Fat Prince. DJ Jazzy Jerry and the Fat Prince. That's, uh, so you can hear me. All right, he's got, so that's one, one time. That's P-H-A-T though, not F-A-T. That's not a fat joke on myself. Here, let me, let me, let me remove you and re-add you and see if that works. Say goodbye to Jerry. All right, say hello to Jerry. Nope, still not working. I think he's giving us the finger. <laughs> oh, yeah, DJ Spice. Spicy! That's what we call him. DJ Spicy! Well, he's playing. That's good. Maybe I can just narrate what he's doing. I don't know what's wrong with it. Okay. So he's looking at covering checks. So covering checks is going to hide evidence that you've already been compromised. So hiding tracks covers evidence that you've already been compromised. Uh, evade network detection hides evidence that you're attacking something. Yeah. So you want to search for HMI. So let me tell you how search for HMIs works. <clears throat> And I misunderstood this when I was playing Jerry. So I got angry at the game for no reason on this aspect. Um, I'll admit that here publicly. Um, so searching for HMIs will automatically find HMIs if they are there. There is a chance that you will automatically have access to it. However, if the blue team has deployed policies and procedures in, uh, I think, also uh, awareness training, then it will reduce that chance by half. So... You can continue to search for HMIs once you found them to try to gain access to it. So now he's digging deeper into the plant. So he's already at the plant. If he goes into the plant control room, he has a greater chance of being caught. Um, and the same with the plant uh, data closet. But if he goes into the control room, he'll find an actual human operator station HMI. If he stays in the plant, he'll find a... Um, embedded HMI on the process. You have a better chance of not getting caught by staying in the plant and searching for HMIs. And so he's going to research physical security. So physical security gives you a better chance of success against physical breaking and entering. Uh, human S social engineering gives you a better chance um, social engineering your way through the plant. He said, dang it, I still can't have a voice here. I, I I don't have a voice. And he's thinking, this sucks with Clint as my voice because nobody wants Clint's voice. Yeah, somebody says, Jerry about to get arrested again. Come on. Don't you put that evil on him. Don't jinx him. All right. He says he can leave and come back and refresh the browser. But if you refresh the browser... um. You lose the game. I mean, you, you lose that. The game is gone. You wipe it clean, and there's no way to come back. We are working on a save and restore feature, though. Um, oh, the restream browser. 
Yeah. He's going to leave. Okay. So he found a way. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't go anywhere. He found it. And you actually have access to it. Did you get access to it as well? Look at that. Damage the ice right there. You have access to the PLC. Click on the... Uh, don't do that. Click on the PLC. Damage the ICS process. This is what I was trying to do to you, Jerry, during our game. But I didn't get access to it like you did. The game likes you better. Damage that ICS process. Oh, not enough resources. Just let it let it recover. Just end your turn, do some stuff, get your resources back, and attack the ICS. This is going to be a, like a 12-turn win. I'm going to upgrade. Jerry's going to be upgraded. All right, so uh, do it. Yeah, cover your tracks on that. Cover your tracks on that. Well, okay, here, here's the thing. You can't, I don't, I don't know if you, so here's a, there's, here's a, not a bug, but here's an issue with version 1.8 that we're fixing in 1.9. You have physical access. Technically, you shouldn't be able to cover your tracks there because you're physically at the machine. That's being fixed. Um, but, man, I'm not sure what you should do there. Look at your action queue. What's in the action queue? Yeah, technically, yeah, that's fine. Yep, yep, do that, do that. Technically, um, yeah, the machine that you actually compromise not through physical means, you can cover your tracks there. Yes, that's good. Well, yeah, okay. Yep, and then, yeah, technically you, oh, what happened? Go back to your, go back to your explanation point. What happened? The go up to the explanation point at the top right, right there. Access cut off right there. All right, so that's that is another issue that's fixed in one point nine. You're physically at that machine, so technically you shouldn't have had your access cut off. We fixed that. So next update, you can't get your physical access cut off. Search for HMIs again. Uh, we can plant rogue device, but you also want to search, go search for that HMI again. You should be able to. Oh, there you go. Okay. I feel like I should be doing like sign language or something. All right. So he like he's yeah he's standing right there physically at the machine. So. See, you're you're now you're dealing with some of the difficulties that I had when I was playing you. It, uh, it's, it's not working like it should, like you expect it to work. I'm physically at the machine. Why doesn't Jerry have access to it? How come he got cut off when the network got cut off? He's physically there. I want to see Jerry get frustrated like I did. I wanted to see him kick and scream like a little baby, just like I did. So yeah, uh, Justin has a good comp has a good point. He says, oh well, you know. Uh, you know, it crashed and it's asking for logins. So that's what happened. All right. So. I would. Uh, we're just waiting for you to end your turn, I guess. For what? Fourth quarter? I, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Did you find it? Did you find a new HMI? No, that's old. Let's a new one. Uh, go back in. There you go. You're back in. You refound it. And you have enough resources to damage the, uh, you got your, that's a rogue access. I don't think you can move the rogue access. Uh, damage the ICS process. Destroy, destroy, hammer down, hammer down, hammer down. Boom! Look at that. 14 turn win. So look at that. No direct cyber attacks. Never got arrested. One USB drop. One successful out of three. Oh, I, no, we we 
We want to see the data, not you. Please don't take your shirt off like a like a soccer celebration. Go! All right. Um, resource utilization, ninety four percent. Low score, but a high whim. That doesn't matter. Um, actually, no. Your name's covering it up. I think you got like twenty five something. Like red team. Look at that. Your name's covering. It looks like you have two hundred sixty points, but you actually have more. Twenty six hundred points. Ooh, magic number, baby. Atari twenty six hundred. Um, man. That was efficient. Even with the uh, the slight bug. Even with the slight uh, bug. So, um, man. We're going to have to upgrade Jerry from, from Script Kitty to Junior Red Teamer. That's right. Junior Red Teamer. JRT. So, Jerry, why don't you exit out and then uh, refresh the browser and come back in so you can talk about it? Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and talk smack about you. All right. See, I personally feel this this orange team. What is the orange team? Let's do orange team. That's like um, red team and yellow team together. What is yellow team? What is yellow team? I know what yellow team is. Yellow team is... Don't know. Don't know. Don't know what the, the yellow team is. So that's what we're going to do. So we, so you know what we should do? So like when we have uh, Josh Mason and Jerry are going to play against each other, I think. So uh, I think he's back in. Let me see. I don't know. Are you there? Can we hear you? You're broken. No audio. You're broken. You're still broken. Well, this is what I want to do. I... Want to have like you play or somebody else play when 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 there's more dual streams going on? What I'm going to do is I will have a third stream going on where I'm switching back and forth between the red team and the blue team streams, and I'm going to be shoutcasting it like this. That's what I want to do. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. He said we love it. So. Next time we have a dual stream that I'm not playing in and beating the crap out of Jerry and getting my revenge, um, I'll do a third stream and we'll do shoutcasting. Maybe me and Simon or something like that. I think that I think Simon wants to help. So maybe me, Simon, esports style shoutcasting, Jerry. So yeah, um, dude, we have like we have 20 minutes. In that we have 20 minutes. What do you do? Can you make hand puppets and stuff like that? So it looks like that the, uh, there we go. Oh, magic. Magic man. Now you see him? Now you don't. So, all right. Um, I mean, we'll give you the spotlight. And uh, so, yeah, go reboot and come back, Jerry. And then, because we got 20 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to sit here and don't give me the finger. Um, thumbs up. So I'm going to sit here. And we're going to do an AMA with the crowd right now. Since we originally said AMA, let's do a cybersecurity AMA. Uh, we could possibly do a new game. I'm not going to play a game right now because I don't have my system set up for it. But I can absolutely sit here and entertain the crowd with AMA. Let's do an AMA about cybersecurity. And we can talk about anything. We can talk about red teaming. We can talk about pen testing. As you know, some of you may know, I don't have my book over there right now. I've got a different book. I've got the, the red team. Uh, versus blue, red versus blue game guide, but I'm a career pen tester and red teamer, and uh, I'll answer any questions about you know red teaming, cybersecurity, getting into the industry. You know we've got a great uh, viewer count right now, so uh, so Clint, walk us through what just happened. That's a good idea. All right, so what happened was Jerry, it was infiltrating an industrial control system. I think i didn't look i didn't it may have looked like it may have been a manufacturing plant so maybe the smaller one um so he went physically on site he first he he created a um a malicious usb he went on site to the target he dropped it someone picked it up inserted it and so they did actually he did compromise the machine but that was not integral to the final victory what he ended up doing was he searched for HMIs, human machine interfaces, which was a, a physical panel. Um, it was a physical panel 
on the actual um, control system itself. And he was able to, from there, damage the process. It was an oil plant. Okay, he was able to damage the process by manipulating the HMI panel readout display on the process itself. So, all right, there's a question here. Somebody said, uh, you know, so how did I get into uh, pen testing NASA? I worked for a consulting firm, and I'm not going to um, expose the firm I consulted for because um, I don't want to link the customer to them or anything like that. Uh, but I was on the commercial pen testing team for a large consulting firm, oh. and NASA was one of our clients. We can hear Jerry. All right. All right. I was in the middle of an HMA. I mean, wait, HMA. Wait, wait, HMI. Wait. I was in the middle of an AMA about HMIs. Yeah, we could do AMA for 20 minutes if you want, 17 minutes. Yeah, that was good. Um, guys, I, I just got to tell you, it's the power of the red team shirt. Told you I was going to socially engineer and rip those HMIs off the wall. And we hacked. did it. Your audio got hacked. My audio did get hacked, but that that's okay. That happened. Oh, I like that new uh, that new Simply Cyber. Uh, oh, the flag? Yeah. You're, it's, look at that. We got the same microphone. I need one on mine too now. Yeah. So I'll have the threat gen one. You have the Simply Cyber one. I got a I got a, a company out of Greenville, South Carolina that makes them custom. It, it really nice too. I mean, it's like it's a really nice quality product. By the so way, what, if you like this dynamic right here, where we have this co-hosted thing going on, and and mm -hmm. we're kind of talking about cybersecurity, this is kind of how our new Friday show is going to go the uh, the Threat Gen deep dive. Yeah, check it out. It, you can see it on um, Threat Gen's channel. Actually, uh, Simply Cyber will be uh, paired and restreaming it also so you can uh you can find it both places uh but yeah if you go to th youtube.com slash threat gen i think you'll get the upcoming live streams and you could see it's actually kind of cool it's the whole point behind it is that we are going to take a topic typically something that we talked about in first things first and go a little bit deeper on it kind of understand oh thanks jess yeah thanks jess here's a but when you when you're done there, we have a we have a question here. Yeah, I just want to give, give me one second because I just want to show. Um, okay. Show something here. Uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Let me share my screen. Here, let me do this. <laughs> no, Carrie, you don't need your scuba gear for the deep dive. Yeah. Oh, Junior knows about Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah. So, so this is it right here. Clint and I will be doing this every Friday, right before What's on Your Radar. So if you're familiar with What's on Your Radar on Simply Cyber, the deep dive, it's like we're picking one current event news story and we're diving deep on it. That's the premise. Because, guys, with first things first, we do like seven or eight stories a day, you know, an inch deep. Uh, here's key things you should know. So Clint and I want the opportunity to kind of go a little bit further on a particular story and discuss it the implications, yep. the technical execution of it, all that. So um, that's what's going on here. Go over to ThreatGen's channel. You can see right here, this is what it looks like. And um, subscribe. What do we got? 507 subs. Thank you to all Getting of you up in there. chat. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, all of you in chat who are members, we genuinely appreciate that. So what's the question, Clint? The question is, uh, by the, okay, uh, where are or Navi's? Hold on, hold on, right here. There we go. Justin, uh, I'll answer Justin's question in a second. Carrie, I have a class I'm taking where it's on cybersecurity for critical urban infrastructure, which is like the game. How do you help companies like this? Um, I mean, basically, the 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 way you help them is no different than the way we do it in the game, honestly. And I'm sure what they're going to be telling you in the the course, right? So, critical urban infrastructure versus critical rural infrastructure. It's still critical infrastructure. So, I'm not sure um, what dimension the urban element would bring to it, Clint. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I would the fight before I, I turn it to you, Clint. I would just say, Carrie, all of the stuff you're learning and all of the GRC and sec ops and uh security operations analyst stuff it's all going to be applicable it'll just be a slightly different flavor in the critical infrastructure space yeah yeah and i would say um what you're talking about there probably might you might want to look into uh some of the research and the stuff going on with smart cities um they're doing a lot of uh infrastructure planning and that kind of stuff in smart cities as well but yeah i don't i don't in terms of urban, yeah, I guess I don't really totally understand your question there. Um, 
let me rephrase uh let me let's move on this is a good question here and i just want to answer this um uh, because i am a veteran here and so navi thank you for your service and uh and so Oh, assuming you're, you didn't say whether you whether you served or not, but you're talking about veterans here. But uh, do you guys have anything planned for veterans? We'll be purchasing the monthly student plan uh, today. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, but wonder if you had a pathway that may be GOV specific for veterans breaking in uh, into parentheses into the cybersecurity industry. Uh, yes, we do. Stay tuned on that. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and reach out to me or send me an email at clint at threatgen.com. And I'll be happy to answer further questions out on that and, and talk with you further about that. But when that rolls out, uh, we'll be announcing it on all our channels anyway. Justin asked if the SC notify would be um, pushed to the simply, I'm assuming you mean the simply cyber discord notification channel. The answer is yes. It will, uh, it will. Um, and as you can see here, um, like, well, Justin, if, if anyone isn't already a member of the Simply Cyber Discord, go to simplycyber.io slash discord, uh, and you'll see everything then there. But if you go, Justin, to the Discord server right now and look at the videos and live stream, you'll see that the live sim cyber simulator that we just did uh, popped up in here. So you will get notified. Like, basically, anytime I go live, whether it's for Threat Gen or Simply Cyber, um, it will get notified into that into that channel. Oh, okay, yeah. So energy and waste management, like cyber attacks targeting those areas. So that's yeah, absolutely. You know, I think what you're talking about here. Let me just say, in general, industrial control systems, while all processes and, and organizations are unique the general understanding of a process control system. So like, um, you know, whether you're using a distributed control system or SCADA, um, the protocols that they use um, are all very similar. Navi's disabled Air Force. Thanks, Navi, for your Air Force service. There we it's go. Cyberhound. Yep. What is Air it? Air Force here. I'm yep. prior Air Force. Cyberhound. I, I answered a question for him earlier today in chat. Is it All the other match comms like to call us the chair force. Yeah. Well, you're the only uh, military branch that gets issued an umbrella. I'm pretty sure. Right. Um, well, that's yeah. Well, that's only our uh, our officers. <laughs> um, the question for you here. Is it possible to reproduce a deep dive scenario in threat gen? Well, so uh, de depending on the deep dive scenario we're talking about. Right. But our plan with uh wait are you talking about the red i'm talking about i assume you're oh, talking about i think red he game. he just dropped another comment deep dive is in something you discussed so i'm thinking bob bob like for example we're we're considering talking you know that nft board ape yacht club instagram multi-factor bypass fraud hack like that whole thing we're talking about potentially doing that as our pilot episode of first um, of deep dive uh, where we're going to go in how you would socially engineer, how you would get those multi-factor creds, then how, once you have those creds, how do you parlay it into the fraudulent activity, the social engineering element of it to convince people to go give you their board apes. So that wouldn't map necessarily into uh, red versus blue, but you could take the same concepts and then apply it in a red versus blue as far as like social engineering. Like I just did, I just socially engineered my way onto the plant and uh, like a boss brought down the plant. Yeah. And so like we will be. So number one, what generic things like that, like what you're talking about, Jerry, like, you know, somebody's out sick, boss compromise, fat finger, something like that. Yes, we're putting those in red versus blue. But also um, <clears throat> the intent for the red versus blue roadmap is as like things happen in real life campaigns, like like uh, pipe dream and destroyer two those things we're going to use the ttps the tactics techniques and procedures um or processes that they use and we will be putting those into the red versus blue uh into the game uh jerry you do oh there you are you disappeared for a minute i just turned my camera off real quick yeah you're like eating breakfast during this this stream or whatever and you need to eat i mean let's i, take I didn't my, eat yet today this i need to take some of my pounds and give them a moment <laughs> over to you um i wasn't expecting this thing to fall down and it like i was going to eat between meetings and uh unfortunately that did not happen yeah so, we were right in the middle of our cybersecurity meeting for threat and, and uh, apparently you got attacked by your mm -hmm. uh, your backdrop 
And for those of you who don't know, I am the information security manager, accountable for information security, whatever you want to say for threat Oops. gen. So yeah. rest easy knowing that threat gen is secured. Do you know of any free or low cost online labs that let you learn and practice SCADA or other ICS systems? So I don't know of any free and like, so right now I can tell you um, all of the, the SCADA and ICS system labs and cyber ranges and things like that are currently all part of classes um, like the ones at SANS, which are extremely expensive. And there are, um, I'm trying to think. I'm surprised the government, U.S. government doesn't have any, the, the amount of Yeah, like... but they're not like online. You don't get the, so, so the bottom line is, is that um, everybody's kind of working towards that. Uh, I will tell you here at ThreatGen, you heard it here first, secret, here's a secret project. This is something Matt and I have been working on for a long time, is um, providing little virtual PLCs with ladder logic and to practice. We're, 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 we are in the process of building out a basically a, an ICS sandbox where you can like hook up PLCs and program them programming them and, and hook them up to process and, and do things like that. And we're going to make that very low cost and accessible to students, things like that. But we're a few months out from that. Other than that, I don't know of any others that are out there, especially for free. Um, but I tell you what, because, you know, we're not, we're not shameless self promoters only. I mean, if there's good products out there, we want to help the community. So even as a, even if it's a competitor, providing such a product we'll tell everyone we'll tell the community um because i mean that's why we're in this after all is to help the community and and of course you know and then we'll have jerry talk about those things on simply cyber as well um if, it, if it's a value to his community and i'm sure that is so yeah absolutely i am really surprised though that i mean is it is it because it's difficult to simulate uh a lab <clears throat> environment yeah there's um number one um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a limit to the amount of knowledge and specialties out there of people that know how to build those kind of things. And, in um, you know, I mean, I, you can get, uh, on eBay, you can get like trainers, f physical devices and stuff like that labs on eBay, uh, PLCs and labs and kits and things like that. You, you can, uh, like we're working on doing it virtually though. So you can just, just like red versus blue, but it's like a replica of a PLC in virtual space, 3d. Um, but yeah, I, I check eBay for those kind of things. I mean, there are any, well, depending on how much you can afford, right? I mean, you know, like $250, I think is the lowest. That's expensive for a lot of people. Um, well, and especially then if you're just trying to like play with it a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I would definitely go for the, if you can afford it, go for the full put together trainer, full, fully put together the trainer though. And don't just start buying like PLC parts and everything and try to put together. But there are really good, inexpensive, um, PLC programming classes and ICS classes um, on Udemy. <clears throat> so we can catch them on sale for like 11 or $12. There's like PLC programming courses there, but they're kind of dry and boring, quite frankly. Yeah. Hey, can you bring up Junior's question here uh, at 122547? Can you guys briefly explain Threat Gen site? See Wait. it? There it is. So first of all, Junior... I saw your message earlier about having completed the GRC analyst master class and then getting a job as a GRC analyst. Wicked awesome. Like that, like, I don't, I don't know to what impact the class had on your ability to get the job, but if it was even a min, minute element of it, I'm super pumped because that's the reason that I made the class in general was to help people get those roles. I know Jess Bishop in chat right now also had an interview. I'm almost positive it was Jess had an interview not too long ago where she just like dominated it because of the class. Um, as far as the threat gen site, okay, so and Clint, um, feel free to pipe in when you when you feel appropriate. So the way that the threat gen site is now, we have the red versus blue uh, platform that we just played earlier, and that's very good for like strategic understanding of workflows process both blue and the red side for the grc uh work the portal actually is starting to have and it will have more because that's part of my job educational content around different aspects of cybersecurity, so you can learn a theory and then go into the simulator and learn practice and while it's focused more on blue versus red 
there is GRC concepts in here. Like, for example, if you watch me, Junior, when I play on the blue side, which I'll be doing next Wednesday at 1130 across Josh, Josh Mason, I'll be operating as a CISO. I explain my workflow patterns and my decision making. And uh, there'll be like maybe five or six times during the gameplay where I'll have to make a choice between two good options. And it's not that one of them is a bad option. It's just that I have limited resources, limited uh, people or, you know, what is my actual threat? What's the risk here that I'm trying to most likely encounter? And that's what GRC is. So you can get value for a GRC, understanding operational workflow and decision making around risk analysis. Yeah. And the only thing I'll add is that the courses that we're putting into the red versus blue portal, they are, yeah, they're, I would, instead of looking at them as like these big, huge courses and lectures, there are many lectures that point you to the red versus blue to two very specific labs to where you'll go do lab one, lab two, lab three, uh, with objectives and they tie back to the lecture. So you learn it, like Jerry said, you learn a concept, you go do a lab, you learn a concept, you go do a lab and you can, in what, what I have dreams of doing and, 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 and I haven't talked to Jerry extensively about this, but I would like to create specific GRC type labs or measurement, uh, labs for Jerry's GRC course. Um, to so that you no, can apply we hadn't talked about learning. that but that's a that's a pretty cool idea i'll be happy to do that yeah we talked um, a little bit about something like that but yeah but basically using red versus blue to apply the grc courses uh concepts that you're learning and i mean where else can you get hands-on application style training um for concepts like governance and risk right i mean that that's a very strategic level almost abstract level concept. And so you can use red versus blue to exercise hands-on application of those kind of concepts. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. And again, final thing on this, I'm going, my plan is to play blue on weeks a and red on weeks B and a, B, a, B, a, B. So next week I'll be blue. And I, I have a lot more experience on the blue side than the red side minus this t-shirt. So I explain my methodology and my thinking and my thought process out loud while on stream. So you can kind of uh, benefit from that too. When are you having Josh on as a dual stream? A, a week from today, uh, Wednesday, okay. a week, whatever, week? May, Wednesday, May X. So let's set that up. So he's going to stream and you're going to stream, right? Yeah. Okay. And then what I'll do is, so like if you stream from Simply Cyber yep. and then pair it with Threat Gym, Josh can stream from his Java with Josh. Yeah, cyber uh, and security. Yeah, that's yeah. Yep. Or okay, that's what that is. And then I on Threat Gen will be doing a shoutcast stream. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I can't pair. I can't stream. pair with Threat Gen then. It'll be it'll be a simply cyber stream, a cyber and security stream, a Threat Gen stream that will you'll have to have like shared screen or use OBS yeah. or something to bring up the two the two screens. We'll figure it out. But yeah, I'll do a shoutcast somehow. That'd be awesome. So I would almost expect people not to be in my stream, but be in your stream or, or jumping back and forth. I or point them know. over to it. Yeah. You know, so from from your stream, just point them to the link over to, to mine. And yeah, and I'll I'll do the commentation. So I'll, I'll invite Simon over there too. I don't know if Simon's still on, um, but uh, I'll invite Simon and we can we can do the shoutcasting together on that. Yeah, that'll be fun. We should we should definitely like test that before <laughs> before Wednesday. Yeah, and maybe have Greg or Matt or somebody on with us because as the technical kind of the so like I'll do play by play with Simon and then have Greg because Greg and Matt uh, uh, are our testers and they're the most familiar with the game, so they can be kind of the the technical commentary. Yeah, I love it, Jess. Jess, if you get all three feeds going across the three monitors, take a picture and drop it on Discord. Like put the yeah. Josh in the middle and put Josh on the left and me on the right. That'd be that awesome. Would be awesome. All right. I think that's about, we're about out of time. All right. Well, that was fun. I wish my, yep. I wish my video feed was crisper. I have a camera that de would, should deliver better yeah, quality. I can help you with that. Um, how is mine? Mine's pretty crisp, right? It's yeah. Yours looks crisper than mine. I look, yeah, we I have look... the same camera. We have the yeah, exact same camera. It's your settings. We'll work on it later. Ugh. Maybe I'll fly right. to South Carolina. <laughs> all right guys navi thanks jess carrie justin um you know christopher ward was here earlier um you know simon was here i had a good time 
I wish my audio hadn't cut out. I had all the, I had all the, uh, all the sound effects ready. Yeah. I even had a, I even had this one. Just so you guys know, since you guys were here, um, the, the whole time, this is what I was gonna play. Oh. That was yeah. I had that on deck, ready to go. Yeah, that's a shame because uh, the you know, it, but yeah, hey, it gave us an opportunity to try something new. Me yeah. doing shout casting for you. So, yeah. all right, so <laughs> all right, thanks everybody. I'm gonna pump up good. the music a little bit, and we'll say goodbye, everybody. Take care. <laughs>